Peace, peace, beautiful beings, and welcome back to my channel. This is a one of the first videos in my new segment entitled Conscious Queens on the Rise. So a little backstory about me. As a child, I was not raised in a religious household at all, but around the age of 10, my household, my mom converted to the religion um, of Jehovah's Witnesses. So from about 10 to 18 years old, I went to the Kingdom Hall, I knocked on doors, I read the magazines, studied the Bible, uh, gave talks in a theocratic ministry school, and it was because that's what my mom said we had to do. You know, that was something that inspired my mom, that was something that changed her life for the better, according to her, excuse me, and being a minor child, you do what your mama say to do, right? So when I turned 18, I was anxious to move out on my own. And what happened is as I got older and was studying the religion, I noticed a lot of hypocrisy and conflict between what I was taught at the Kingdom Hall and what I witnessed at home. And when I was bold enough the few times that I was to question such things I was not met with love and understanding and compassion as I would like to have been met with I understand now that I am older my mom had her own challenges that she was dealing with but y'all know how it is old school you know in a lot of black households what goes on in this house stays in this house you don't talk about it, you don't talk back, you don't question me, you do as I say, not as I do, et cetera, et cetera. So I had a lot of questions on Resolve that I kind of just tucked away. And as I got older, around 17, 18, I knew I was gonna be on a quest to get my questions answered. If not from my mom, from someone else. Like I felt like I'd been around the religion long enough to get questions answered to study on my own, to figure out if this is the path I wanted to follow. But things changed. So when I graduated from high school, I moved out and I started to experience the world, so to speak. I got curious about, you know, what was I missing? You know, why couldn't I do this? Why couldn't I go to prom? Why couldn't I celebrate my graduation with my friends? Why couldn't, why were birthdays bad? I just had a lot of questions. So I wanted to see what I was missing in the streets. So by the time I turned about 20 years old, I realized there wasn't nothing down here I was missing. So why was it so negatively portrayed? Why was it such a horrible thing to have friends outside of the Kingdom Hall? You know, I just had so many questions. And then the relationship between me and my mom was very strained. And it was that way for 10 years until we res resolved some issues when I was 28 years old. But at that time, you know, I, I didn't practice any religion. I didn't go to the Kingdom Hall. I was always told bad things about other religions, churches, mosques, uh, just other religions, period. So I stayed away from them, didn't have a curiosity. So I just was kind of out doing my own thing. I still prayed, uh, still gave thanks for my food. You know, I still had certain tenants being a decent person but as far as like the religious practices and attending meetings i didn't do that anymore after my mom passed unexpectedly in 2008 i felt this pull to find the truth i felt this pull to find my own path i felt this pull to do something different something better with my life on a higher level and so I went back to what I knew, which was going back to the Kingdom Hall. I bounced around for about six months to three or four different congregations, trying to find a welcoming space, trying to find what I was looking for, what my soul was yearning for. And all I felt that I was met with was, you know, where have you been? You're so pretty. Your girls are so big. Oh, your mother would love to see you at the resurrection. Do you want to have a Bible study? You know your mom will want you to come back. Like, that's what I was met with. And even though I can say to an extent, I can kind of agree that the people were doing 
what they thought was right, you know, by saying these words to me, it was very off-putting because I would walk away feeling one sad that my mom was no longer here. Number two, I left with more questions than answers because I was feeling as if, wow, so y'all have been teaching me this for the past eight years of my life, my very impressionable years of my life, how much of it is true. And then number three, I felt like the energy towards me was more so people were trying to see who was going to be the one to bring me back into the truth. Like it was a competition. Like it was a like, Oh, sister so-and-so daughter came to our congregation today and we're going to bring her back, you know, and she's crying and yeah, cause I miss my mom and I'm stressed out and frustrated because I didn't feel like people recognized I was a whole grown woman at that time. <laughs> you know, I, I felt like because of the year separation, maybe they thought I froze in time. Not that I was almost a 30 year old grown woman. And because these are people I grew up with, these are people my mother's age and older I felt compelled to be respectful to them and to avoid me being disrespectful with my words or behavior. I just would stop going to that particular congregation and I would bounce around to another one until I was met with the same energy. I did not appreciate feeling like it was something to be gained by bringing me back into the truth. It was something to be gained by getting, a, you know, being my Bible study coach. Like, I, I can't describe it any better. I just know I felt really bad. And it was something I definitely was not interested in. So I went many years just, you know, questioning, crying, praying, because my personal life was falling apart. And I just knew what I tried to do by going back to the Kingdom Hall wasn't it. And I had ingrained in me so much about other religions and them being fake religions and, you know, them being false and not the right way. Like I was afraid to explore another religion. But then at the same time, I felt like, well, I don't want to be underneath that thumb either. So I was kind of like in limbo, if that makes sense. And there's a saying that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And my teacher came in the form of a non-practicing uh, Muslim man. He began to teach me first about the power of the mind and about positive affirmations and began to give me books to read by Napoleon Hill, Dale Carnegie, Eckhart Tolle. YouTube taught me about Dr. Wayne Dyer, Louise Hay, Lisa Nichols, Les Brown. And I became hungry for knowledge. When I was taught that I can, in fact, change my reality by changing my thoughts and that I was actually in control of my thoughts and that I actually had the freedom to change my mind, that was a game changer for me. So I began this quest to quench every thirst for knowledge that I had. And one of those thirsts for knowledges was to find out for myself, not because I was told, but to find out for myself why these other religions were bad. So between the library, between videos, between books, between YouTube, between old PBS specials, I studied everything. Not with the intent to convert to these religions, but to figure out what was so bad. So I studied the Kabbalah, I studied uh, pieces of the Quran. I studied Hinduism, Buddhism. Uh, I studied Catholicism. I wanted to know uh, Jewish faith. I looked into that. I wanted to know what was so different between the religions. And you know what I found out? They all have the same underlying theme, just said a different way. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Love thy neighbor as thyself. That was the underlying theme of every religion that I rambled off and the ones that I forget. What was different though, were the teachings or the names that they call their God or the higher source. Some of them had multiple gods, but that underlying theme was the same. The steps 
to get that way may have been different or the steps and directions to follow in order to practice that religion may have been different. But the underlying theme was the same. And I'm not telling you what someone told me. I'm telling you what I discovered on my own back in 2012, going into 2013. When I first figured that out, I was angry because I felt like my mother lied to me. I felt like people within a religion lied to me. And then I had to forgive my mom because she only told me and taught me things that other people told and taught her. And so I had to forgive my mom because she was looking for something. She was on that quest that to, to find something higher to believe in or something higher to practice to make her a better person. And that's the path that she chose. So when I studied, studied and started on my own path, I had no choice but to forgive her because I was able to comprehend and accept at that moment that my mom didn't intentionally teach me the wrong thing for me. She taught me what was right for her based upon how other people taught her. So once I was able to release that anger and that confusion, a whole bunch of doors were opened up to me. I watched the three series of Hidden Truths, which made me mad. <laughs> I watched and learned about how powerful my melanin is, how, how powerful my ancestors were, and how powerful we as a people still are. Then I started to study different cultures, as I mentioned, and see what they believe, believe their pantheons, their practices. Why do they use candles? Why do they use stones? Why are some people so in tune with nature? I started studying so much that it's like a film over my eyes had lifted. I went back and watched old movies that I didn't understand, old cartoons that I didn't get, and I saw the messages. And even from X-Men to The Matrix to Butterfly Effect to Inception, I watched so many movies with a, a different vantage point. My third eye was opening. So I wanted to do things to continue on that journey. Because my family, my children saw a big change in me. I was a horrible mom back in the day. I was. So I had to get to a space of forgiving myself by forgiving my mom, having my children forgive me, and just press on and move forward. So now that I found all these different things that resonate with me, I pick out the ones that really have shown me success that really work for me, that really have improved my quality of life mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and financially. And I continuously practice a set of things and rituals that keep me on that path. And I understand the confusion, the challenge, the guilt, the anger that comes from coming out of a religion and learning universal truths, for feeling like you're going crazy, for feeling like you've been lied to all your life, so I'm dedicating this playlist, Conscious Queens on the Rise, to talk to you all, to help you all, to let you know that I'm here as a resource to help you get through that challenging time. Because I was alone going through it. And I remember how that felt. I remember the sleepless nights, the tears, the crying, the addiction to consuming more information, to sitting and thinking about what I just consumed, to figure it out, praying about direction. I remember that. So Conscious Queens on the rise, I'm here for you. If you have any particular questions or you can relate to anything that I'm stating, leave it in the comments below and I'll share more about the coaching program that I am launching to help all of you out there along this scary but very rewarding journey. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you're one of the first persons to know when I upload new content. My channel is dedicated completely to mental health and healing without medication. So I'm going to be sharing with you tips and techniques and even things that I do today to help maintain my mental health. So if you have any particular questions, you can leave that in the comments below and I'll be happy to make a video answer just for you. I am Coach V and my signature message is that mental health is sexy and I need your help in sharing my signature message worldwide. See you in the next video. Be blessed.